in order for sheathing materials to perform correctly, they got to be properly installed. With me today is Doug Bobby with Dow Building Materials. Hi, Doug. Hi, Steve. Can you walk us through the installation techniques? And I understand this works pretty well with tilt wall construction. That's right. Uh, a lot of people build uh, tilt walls, build them on the deck and tilt them up. That's another reason the lightness of foam sheathing makes it very easy to tilt these walls up versus the heavier wood kinds of sheathing. So you just install the sheathings and bracings on the deck as you typically would. You just put it up over the studs and nail it. You can use plastic cap nails, roofing nails, staples, and put those about 12 inches on center around the perimeter of the board and about 16 inches in the field. Butt the boards tightly together and it's easy. And since many of the foams are durable, at, while you're installing them, you can kneel or walk often on the foam uh, when it's on the deck. Then tilt it up into place and the foam's already installed and ready to go. Do the codes have any requirements about fastener spacing? There's not a code requirement for fastener spacing because foam sheathing is not a structural product, so there's no code requirements for fastening. Let's talk about uh, corner bracing. Yeah, there's a lot of ways to brace. Uh, since foam is not a structural sheathing, it does need to be braced per some of the recommendations in the building code. A couple of those are diagonal bracing, which could be metal T-straps or 1x4 wood lead-in bracing or wood panel sheathings in the corners and every 25 uh, feet along the wall. So that could be 7 16 OSB or plywood in the corners. Now I notice your product has a special film on the outside. Can you explain why that's necessary? Yeah, some of our products have film on both sides of the foam. That's to add durability, so it's uh, more damage resistant at the job site. In other words, when you pick it up, it won't snap in two? Right. What are other installation issues? A question we get sometimes, Steve, has to do with jam extensions for windows and doors. Whenever you use a sheathing that's thicker than a half inch, sometimes you have to add jam extensions to windows so that they'll end up flush when the drywall is installed. So uh, we get some questions about how do you handle that. Well, it used to be when it was not common to have thick sheathings that you'd have to buy and install separate jam extensions to the insides of windows. Nowadays, a lot of windows come with uh, jam extensions already attached. So if you just tell the uh, window manufacturer what thickness of wall you're going to have, they will supply you the window with the correct jams. Do you ever recommend this product be glued up? It's not necessary. Some people do glue it, though. We have seen people do that, but it's not necessary. Foam sheathing makes a lot of sense in commercial construction. What are your recommendations over steel studs? Okay, as you know, Steve, steel studs are real thermal short, so it's even more important to have a foam sheathing on the outside of steel studs. And we recommend using screws with uh, washer, metal washers. And if you use a one-inch head metal washer, then you can put the screws as you would nails, which is uh, 12 inches around the perimeter and 16 in the field. We have seen people use very large roofing type washers. When you do that, then you don't have to put the fasteners as frequent. So you could probably half the, uh, the spacing of the fasteners in that case. Are there any issues over how long this product can be exposed outdoors before it has to be covered up? Typically, foam sheathing should be covered with the final exterior finish within about 30 days of installation. And really, almost any kind of exterior finish can be used over foam sheathing. Brick, uh, stucco, vinyl, wood, all kinds of exterior finishes work very well over foam sheathing. Doug, thanks for being here. Thank you, Steve.